Peter. Hey, Austin. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Shinnecock Canal. And this is the Lock House. Have you ever been? No, no first time. All right, well, today we're going to take a behind the scenes look at what goes on in the Lock House. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. go. My name is Don Normoyle, and I'm actually a maintenance mechanic for Suffolk County. And I work here at the Shinnecock Canal. So let's talk a little bit about the operation. Okay. How does this work? Okay. Well, basically, we have, uh, we have Peconic Bay to the north and we have Shinnecock Bay to the south. Way back in the day, I, somewhere in the late 1800s, they decided to dig a hole, the channel through here, to get water from the Peconic Bay into Shinnecock Bay. From what I understand, back then there was no inlets like we have today. We have the Shinnecock Inlet and the bridges. So Peconic Bay was kind of like a stagnant bay. It was like, today we would call it healthy. It was like the grass was this tall in the bay. So they had this idea to dig the channel through to get some salt water from Peconic Bay to flush out Shinnecock Bay. And that's what they did. And uh, over the years, like I believe it was 1938 hurricane, it blew, blew the inlet through. And that's really changed everything now. You got water flowing back, you know, all this kind of stuff. So anyway, they got the Shinnecock Canal here and the county maintains the lock. This, this, this is a lock is like an elevator for boats. Okay. Uh, right now you can see the locks are closed. So if a boat needs to come through, say if boats come from the south, They'll pull in here, they'll tie up, and we'll close this side of the gates, and then we'll open up. We have two valves on that side, we'll let this water will go down. It's actually go down north, it's the opposite of what you would think, but you're always going down north when the locks are closed. And, and then we level out the water, open up the other side, the boats would leave. Then a boat coming from the north would do the same thing. They'd come in, and we'd close the gates, we'd let the water back in, and they'd come back up to the right level, and we'd let them out, and they'd head south. That's, that's basically all it is. It's just an elevator for boats to come through. And it's a tidal, it's a tidal, uh, it runs on, on a schedule of the tide. So for about six hours, approximately, the locks will be closed like they are now. And then there'll be another period where everything will open up and it just becomes like a river. And it runs from north to south. And at that time, boats will come through without our help. They'll just traffic lights, that's it. Uh, boats heading north would come through on this side. And boats heading south would go through those tidal gates in the center over there. They, they'll be open. and. And it gets kind of exciting over here in the summertime. It's like you get you get several hundred boats coming through in a, in a day, and it's, it's it's actually fun to watch. So. Is there ever a traffic jam like oh, yes. you see right now oh, on yes. Sunrise yes. Highway, looking over? Yes, when you get when you get like a couple hundred boats at a time coming through, yeah, they do back up on both sides. But for the most part, boaters know this navigation. Oh, sure. Yes, I mean we always have new ones every year. You, people that come through for the first time, and they. They get all twisted around, and it, like I said, it's like a show they put on almost for you. So. It's, it's, it's. And without this mechanism, what would happen? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think uh, I'm not a biologist or whatever. I don't. I don't know what would happen. Maybe the canal would close up. I don't know if they didn't have the lock system, but at different tides. And I'm not really sure what would happen with that. I have to talk to an engineer for that. Has there ever been a thought about getting rid of it? I've heard people talk about it, but not, 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 not on my level, not, not what, you know. So proper etiquette for when you're coming through is to what, have patience? Yeah, that's always a good thing, you know, and when, you, when a boat comes through, they gotta, we have traffic lights, that's the first thing they say, so we have, you know, red and green lights, so when the green light comes, they can pull in, and, and then they're supposed to find a spot to tie up, that's all on their own, their boat, or they should know how to tie the boat up, and then, yeah, basically, you know, etiquette, is, it's a good thing. It's, it's a, everybody gets along, it makes the day go by nice. Wait your turn, be patient. We can get quite a few boats in here at one time also. You know, I mean, we get like 20, 20 boats in here at a time. So it's not too, it flows. Cool. And upstairs, what does it look like upstairs? Once we go up there, I know you're going to show us a little bit about yeah, there's, a, there's a control panel upstairs that we operate the gates and the valves with and the traffic lights, basically. I also have a little control panel in this room and one in the far room, but I'll bring you upstairs. That's where we mainly work for them. This is, we would use this during construction times when we out here working with the construction crew. But, uh, All right, so let's take a look upstairs, okay? Yeah, that's fine. So this is the control room. This is the control room. This is, this is actually, uh, there's someone up here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the reason for that being is that this lock that we control here, during the times of closing, we have to make sure that we close this lock before they would slam shut on their own. 
because they're not really designed to slam shut. It would break equipment. So uh, we have 24 hour coverage here. You know, I've been here during hurricanes, blizzards. Well, you know, there's always someone here. So. And during bad weather, what are we seeing? A lot of churning water? Oh yeah, well, basically in this canal, I mean, it runs north and south. We're like in a valley here, and I mean, you want to see sometimes it like it's like you're in a wind tunnel here. So you get like the wind whipping up in the snow, and you know, it gets, it's very interesting. You see things here normally that people wouldn't see in normal everyday life, and especially when you work a night shift. When you work the night shift here, you, you see things at night here that's really interesting. Different types of, you know, sea creatures and stuff you wouldn't normally see, you know, like schools of different types of fish that you wouldn't see just swimming around. Because it's, it's quiet, it's nighttime, you know, it's, it's interesting. Have you ever seen sharks? I've never seen a shark in here, but I'm sure they do come through. You know, there's sharks in the, there's sharks in the bay. Pecani Bay and also Shinnecock. Is there ever a risk of this not operating? And what happens if that happens? Well, we do have backup generators and all that kind of stuff. So we've never had a time. Actually, during Hurricane Sandy, I think there was a time. I wasn't here at the time. But I think they lost everything. I think the generators were underwater. And, and I'm really not sure what happened. I think they brought emergency generators in on trailers just to get the lock. The most important thing is, is to get a lot closed. It, you know, if the tide, when the tide is open and, and, and it's like a river coming through here, when that slows down to the point where it's going to start coming back the other way, we have to make sure we close either this side or that side, you know, of the, the main lock here. Otherwise, like I said, it'll slam shut and cause major damage. So I believe they, I believe they were, the county was able to get an emergency generator on the trail in here and hooked up to where they could at least get the door closed. Have you ever had to do it manually to close these? I never did, but I hear stories back in the when this place was when this when this set of the canal was done back in 1967. When you see on top of the valves, there's those big things. It looks like you could turn it with your hand. The two black valves over there with the red tips. Right. These, I hear that there was a way to do it manually, but we, we never had to do that, and I wouldn't want to have to do that. It sounds like a scene out of yeah. a movie. Yes. <laughs> well, back in the day, they did things different. You know, I mean. They used to use ropes for things and, and you know, it was a lot different back then. Before this was here, the, this canal used to be right over near where the bridge is. The, 20, the 27 bridge. At 67 they built it and they put it here. And we're ready for another, hopefully down the road sometime, they're going to have to redo this whole place. Because it is getting kind of... So typically, in the height of the summer, when somebody's coming through the locks, how long do they wait? Just, it's usually within five minutes. You get through five, ten minutes. But if there's a lot of boats, yeah, there is times where they might be waiting 20 minutes, half an hour, just like the LIE. <laughs> Traffic backs up. You know, you can only do so much. Uh, when the locks are open and the, and the currents flow, and then boats can come through on their own, and, and a lot more boats can come through because all the boats heading north would come through this side, and the boats heading south would go through that side. It's just, but, but it gets interesting with the current, the boats against the current, and the you know. You see boats lose control from time to time. It's if, if you're not a good boater, you should not come through here. <laughs> That's my recommendation. But uh, they do. So the alternative, if you do not go this way, is to pilot your boat all the way around Montauk. Well, if you need to get to, yeah, if you need to get to the other side, or come through when the locks are closed, like they are now, where the water's not moving. So, uh, but yeah, if you want to get over to the Conic Bay side, you'd have to go around Montauk. Yes, if that is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me show you how we can operate. Sure. Right, close this side. This is the this is the south side. This is the Shinnecock Bay side. I'm gonna close the gates over here. So I turn the power on, which is hydraulic pressure. It's hydraulic pumps that have run. And then these are my two gates. I'm gonna close these. While doing so, I should have turned the red light on, so no boats come in while I'm doing this. <laughs> As you can see, the doors are closing. The two gates. Almost like watching water boil, right? <laughs> or paint dry. <laughs> See, normally both would have pulled in. I would have did this now, and, and then I'll show you what happens next. Once these doors meet up and they, they form a dam on that side. Okay, now I turn the power off. And I come over to this side. And I turn the power on this side, and I'm going to open up these two valves over here. And there's not really much to see with that, with the valves on. Well, what's going to happen now is this water is going to 
drop down to the level on the north side, the water in this lock. And right now it's about maybe, maybe two foot difference, two and a half feet difference. It's not all that exciting, but it, it does what it has to do. So it's basically a boat elevator is what this is. This water's, gonna, this water's actually dropping down now as you speak. You'll see a little turbulence on the other side. It's just starting now. And then you open up that Yeah, gate. once this gets down to the same level as over there, which is not going to be too much longer. Because we're not, right now we're only like, maybe like two feet, two and a half feet from one side to the different. Sometimes you can get like four foot, four and a half foot difference in here. That's, that's a little more extreme. And are you just doing this visually or is there an actual marker out there? No, nah, it's basically visual. I mean, when you're here for a while, you kind of can see. Years ago, they did have a tide staffs out there, which would show you the difference. But over the years, they stopped using them. So if you had to do this at night, you really are seeing it in the dark. Well, we have overhead lighting. And the lock tenders, they, 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 after you work here for a while, you, you kind of can tell. You, you can know, tell where the yeah. water line is. Yeah. So right now, I'm going to power back on. I'm now going to open these doors over here, these gates. Ah. And once these gates are open all the way, then any boats that were in here would be on their way. Now I'm closing those valves back up. This is the end of the process. And then the boats that were in here, they would have left. And the boats that want to come through this the other way, they would, they would, they'd pull in now and we'd do the same thing back. And I notice we're attracting some of the birds. A lot of birds here. Yeah, they're, they're fishing also. They know when this is open. These, these birds are also fishing. They, they like to fish here. At nighttime, you get the, the kingfishers here, and it's really neat. To, stuff you wouldn't normally see, you know, during the day. But they, they hang out on the tie gates and they pick out the bait. <laughs> How unusual is a system like this? Are there others like this in the Northeast? Uh. Not like this one, but there are there are ones all the way up. New York's got a system. Uh, St. Lawrence River, they got real big locks, but big ships go through and stuff. And uh, you got the what the Erie Canal, I believe, and places. But this is a different thing because it's just two different bays. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Let's Go Show.